Welcome back to the channel. I'm Gio, and we're gonna be working on a 2007 to 2014 Polaris. God damn it, this damn thing. This thing is so annoying. You know, I've replaced this damn thing like four times already. I don't know why it keeps going on. Well, that didn't work, so I guess I gotta buy a new one. Oh well. All right, welcome back. This doesn't work. Gotta replace it. And we're gonna be working on a 2007 to 2014 Polaris Outlaw carburetors today. I'm gonna teach you how to take it apart, how to clean it. So here's the carburetor. It's out of the bike, obviously. We're gonna go ahead and undo these four bolts right here. And these four bolts, you always wanna use a number two screwdriver. Uh, reason being is you do not wanna strip them. And if they already are stripped, this has enough bite tip, then uh, you could go ahead and break them loose. So we're gonna do that real fast. And this is just a model. This is really clean compared to something that would come out of a bike. Um, this, this is the original carburetor for the Polaris. Um, I just ended up replacing it. Just undo these four screws at the bottom of the carburetor. This is what holds the float bowl to the actual carburetor itself. And you could go ahead and remove the drain screw as well at the bottom of the float. Um, since if you're gonna be cleaning it, might as well take it out. Here's the bottom. Here's the inside of the float bowl right here. What I like to do so that way I don't lose them is put the screws right back. And now if you look inside your carburetor, you have your float, you have your pilot jet, your main jet, and everyone has different names for them. I usually call the pilot jet the idle jet because this is the most important jet in order for the bike to stay idling. If your bike sits and you don't use it all the time, this is going to be the jet that doesn't let or doesn't allow your bike to run or start. Then you have your main jet. And then inside is for your needle valve. And to get your float off, I use a pick, just a cheap Harbor Freight pick. Take that out. And then out comes your float and your float needle as well. And then you could go ahead and take out the uh, needle seat right here for your float needle. Um, I don't really do, I don't really take it out unless if I think it really needs it. But in this case, for demonstration purposes, all it is is just a screw, a Phillips screw right here with a retainer. Let's see if the camera can get that and then the actual seat itself. And if you were to replace this, all you would need is a needle nose plier and just pull, wiggle this out right here. It's brass, so it's soft. It will come out. And then also you could take out your idle adjustment screw that's on the side of the carburetor. And I'll show you how to adjust that. And here in Southern California, um, we set it at two and a half turns out. So basically this is the whole carburetor disassembled. You do not need to take apart the choke or anything like that in order to clean a carburetor. And all you need to do is, I would always recommend replacing the gasket 
around the uh, float bowl and any other gasket that connects to the intake side of your engine. And that's pretty much it. Um, all you need to do is spray carb clean into every single hole, every single one. Make sure you have a, a tube coming out of your carb cleaner. And this is a simple carburetor cleaner you can find on Amazon, nothing crazy. And you spray every single orifice, every single hole, spray it good. If it's really dirty, go ahead and get in there with a wire brush and a soft bristle brush. Um, you do not want to damage anything, especially if you're going to be reusing the seals, because sometimes they're fine and you don't need to re uh, you don't need to replace them or anything. So that's good. And when you start cleaning your parts, you need to be careful with your rubber rubber components, okay? So right here, you have a little rubber piece. And when you clean this, sometimes it'll be really dirty, sometimes it won't. And just hit it with some carb clean. Uh, it just depends on what type of carb, carb clean you're using because some can be erosive and damage everything that it has rubber. So you wanna be careful with that. And now when you clean your jets, this hole is big enough inside the main jet that you can see through. And if it's dirty, all you have to do is use a carb, clip, a carb cleaning kit. In my case, what I found to be uh, to work the best is hire from a patch kit. It could be from a tire patch kit, a plastic patch kit, whatever. But this size or whatever gauge wire this is works perfect for cleaning out idle jets, pilot jets, main jets, what have you. So all I did was just grab this mesh wire and I just pulled one apart. And I used that in order to clean every single jet and it's simple and it's it works everyone has their own method so, um, sometimes if you if you if it's really dirty and really gunky you could use um, combustion cleaner and I believe Yamaha makes a really good brand or a really good um, combustion cleaner and put it in a shot glass and clean it like that or just don't want to wait for the combustion cleaner to clean it all out. Go ahead and stick the wire through really gently and twist as you go. Sometimes it can be finicky. Sometimes it can take, that's why you have to take your time with this stuff. And you do not want to damage or widen up the orifices. But if you go and do it gentle enough, in a slow pace, you can get it through. So this is the disassembly. It's very simple, very easy. So let's go ahead and put it back together. So we're gonna start with that retainer and the screw. And remember, always use a number two Phillips screwdriver. You do not want to use an impact or drill or anything like that because you can damage it and will damage it. So remember, take your time with it. You don't have to crank this down, it just needs to be hand finger tight. If that, just enough, so you know it's not gonna be coming apart when you're riding and the vibrations and everything. Okay. Hands upside down, nope, oh, that's great. And if you see, if you don't see, there is a 
little tag that goes over and it slides into there. And just line it up, line up your holes, push it through. And I'll just take the same screwdriver or the pick and a nice little soft tap. So you just want to use plastic or rubber. You do not want to use metal. Metal on metal is no good. Go ahead and put your idle screw back in and you could go ahead and tighten it down all the way. And like I said, here in Southern California, um, we usually only go two and a half turns out. So to demonstrate, snugged all the way in, and you'll go one full turn. That's one. Full turn, that's two. And you'll go a half a turn. Two and a half turns out, and you should be spot on on your idle. You do probably just need to make a minor adjustment. And let's go ahead and put the float back on, screwed in. And do not forget to put your drain screw back in as well. There you have it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Peace.